I was asked for an opinion on this Forge or Chuck. Uh, the main reason for that was that there are I may not be able to see it, there are cracks in some of the corners of the um, the, the sockets for, for driving it and is it worth saving, is it worth doing anything. It's a Bernard Chuck, quite a good brand. One interesting thing though is that there are serial numbers on the side of the jaws, you can see them there, um, and they all match. But when you look at the back of the chuck, there the serial number doesn't actually match. So it's an interesting chuck, we'll have to see what the story is. It's a good idea to take your chucks apart once every so often. Uh, just to give them a bit of a clean and a, and a lubrication. Four jaw chucks are, are, are pretty easy. Um, it's it's just a matter of unscrewing the jaws. got the, the jaws off, the screws out, the retainers out. I'm just soaking these um, screws in some solvent. One thing I will do though is using a, a small screwdriver because I haven't got a scraper that big is just go along and, and, and scrape off some of the caked on dirt and dust out of the, the grooves here. Because one of the things that dictate how good a chuck is is how tight are these jaws in the groove and if you've got some build up there it's not really fair. Now that one there is pretty good and that's without any grease or anything. When I when I reassemble this I'll put some grease in um, but you know to me that suggests well actually this chuck isn't in too bad condition it's 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 been in the wars um, you can see here someone has taken a chunk out of the side of that one but you know it's uh, it's it's still in reasonable condition. As you can see, the solvent here is uh, getting pretty dark, but that's okay because that's not the bit that's doing the work. What I do want to get out of here, though, are all the um, the fines, the the bits of dust and dirt and, and metal particles. What I normally do with my solvent is I, I I have a funnel, just a household funnel, and a couple of bits of paper towel. And what I'll do is I'll, if I can do this without spilling it everywhere. I'll run that through there like a like a filter. And that'll that'll go through there and the towel will pick up some of the dirt, metal particles and all that sort of thing, which means I can extend the life of my solvent. I'm being a bit cheap, I know, but it's better than, than just sort of tossing it out or, or having to burn it or something. Uh, and at the end of that, because the solvent evapor evaporates off the um, the towel can be um, popped into the, the normal bin, uh, provided you haven't been playing with heavy metals, and, you, and you'll be fine. So here are the, um, the screws out of the solvent bath. Uh, and as you can see, this one here is in, in quite reasonable condition. The threads doesn't seem to be worn. Uh, the socket's all good. But if we compare that to the one which uh, I was first asked about, this one here's got a broken socket and that thread is is distinctly worn so I need to I need to think about what to do with that um, I could probably weld, weld up the corners there but is it worth it with that thread being so worn it's a bit of a dilemma because the chuck itself is in it seems to be despite you know a little bit of, of uh, wear and tear uh, seems to be in reasonable condition so it's really a question of what do we do with this screw so putting it back together again is pretty much the reverse of, of taking it apart put the screws in um, and then push the, the forks in. Don't grease that part because that's that needs to be a decent sort of fit in there. Uh, put a bit of grease in there if you like. Grease up the screws 
they don't uh, doesn't hurt having a having a little bit of, of grease put on them uh, and they just tap back and you may have to adjust them a little bit sorry if you push them too far they're going to bind How did the solvent reclamation go? Well, that's the, the bottom of the tin, so you can see a few fines there. Once that dries out, I can wipe that out. But if you want to know what was in the solvent, that's the paper after it's uh, had the solvent run through it. So you can see there are some, some little bits of, uh, look like organic matter, grass seeds, lots of dirt, all that sort of thing. The solvent, on the other hand, well, you can't see it in there. Take my word for it, it's, it's far cleaner and uh, nicer to use. So. That's just something I do to prolong the life of, of my solvent. Um, every so often I'll top the tin up with fresh kerosene or if it's a, a critical job use uh, clean kerosene but then it goes into this tin and gets used for general uh, cleaning. So this is the state of play. These three jaws here are refined. Um, they, they mesh nicely in the screws. They're, they're tight in the block. This jaw here, the number two jaw, um, that that slides quite nicely in the in the in the you know the block the chop body. Uh, the fork looks like it's in quite good condition, but if you look at the screw, the it's it's worn on one side and it's also cracked on the end. Now, I've I've tried running a file across this uh, across the back here, and it's hardened. If it was soft, I could probably make up a a replacement without too many dramas. But because it's hardened, it makes it a bit difficult. So. I think what I'm going to end up doing is probably putting a, a, a bit of weld in the corners of these. Uh, it's only these three that need it. Um, and try and patch that up. And uh, then we'll just have to see what, what else happens. You can probably buy replacements of these. I think Bernard is done through uh, the 600 group. The trouble with buying, of, of course, with buying things like this for a home workshop is that they can be expensive. but sometimes you uh, you haven't got much of a choice. Here's the uh, screw. If you recall there were cracks on the on the four corners there. I've ground those out uh, and tried putting a blob of, of weld metal there. How well I don't know. It'll work I don't know because it is hardened. Um, it may may crack. Two, um, one, one handy tip to do this sort of thing if you've got the inside an inside corner which you don't want to distort, uh, this is a bit of copper pipe which I just had sitting around the place. I've flattened it out and made it into a little angle piece. So that that actually went inside there, so that when I was building that area up, I didn't have stuff blobbing through. Because you can imagine in a in a, a hole like that, uh, I'd have all sorts of strife trying to get a file in there to to clean out a blob of of metal. So anyway, that's uh, one little tip. Here's the finished item cleaned up. Um, not too bad. There's a there's a slight mark just there, which makes me wonder whether I've got a crack developing or or what. But we'll see what how, how it goes. Certainly the chuck key fits, so that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll put it back in the and the the jaw also fits quite nicely. So I'll put it back in the um, the chuck and we'll see how it goes. So there it is. Uh, it fits, it doesn't bind up, it, it works quite nicely. Really it's it's going to be one of those uh, time will tell things whether or not those uh, tacks, welds, whatever you want to call them, hold or whether the, uh, the whole thing collapses. 
I certainly wouldn't be recommending it for hard use, but from my understanding is this is going to go onto a, uh, a tool and cutter grinder, uh, that sort of application, so there shouldn't be any, any large loads on the, uh, on the chuck. Um, as in you shouldn't need to, to tighten it down too much, so I, I don't think that'll, that'll split again. I've put grease on here, um, and then where I've got exposed grease I've wiped it off, and the reason for that is simply that uh, uh, you don't want metal dust hanging around in your grease, so you need a bit of lubrication there, and the same would go if you oiled it. Uh, you need a little bit of lubrication, but you don't want it to be uh, uh, over the top and attracting dust. So thanks for watching, I hope this has been of interest, and uh, thanks to those who have inspired me in my metalworking journey.